I've featured a couple of stories lately on scanner listeners being prosecuted and many people asked how the authorities knew that these individuals were listening to radio scanners. Well, in the stories that I told you, I simply don't know. One featured a suspected link to a pirate radio station and my guess is that there's more to that story than meets the eye. However, today we'll be looking at the simple technology used to detect the use of anything between unlicensed TV sets to military radios in days gone by. It sounds quite complex, but after some research, it's really quite simple. In the 1930s and even later, many radio listeners in the UK were still using simple two-tube radios, comprising of a regenerative grid leak detector, followed by a single audio output stage. An incorrectly operated regenerative set could easily be picked up and tracked down, but regenerative sets correctly adjusted didn't radiate, and I'm not aware of a way that they could have been picked up by something like a post office detector van. The regenerative sets were gradually replaced by superheterodyne receivers where the incoming signal was converted to a fixed intermediate frequency, usually 455 kHz, by a local oscillator operating at the sum of the intermediate frequency and the frequency of the station desired. Most of these sets didn't use an RF stage to isolate the frequency converter from the antenna and when in use they would radiate weakly at the local oscillator frequency. Therefore it seems quite possible that the detector vans used sensitive receivers tuned to the local oscillator frequencies corresponding to the frequencies of the local radio stations which back then were relatively few in number. Now it sounds complicated, but basically the receiver was actually transmitting a weak signal that the detector van close by could receive and direction find. And they knew which frequencies to listen to based on the radio services in the area. Simple. Interestingly, whenever the locations and times that a detector van would be operating were published in the local newspapers, the number of new licenses taken out would greatly increase. So let's look at the military side of things. During World War II, there were fears that local oscillator radiation from receivers on board ships would be used by the enemy to pinpoint the location of convoys. This led to the development by the E.H. Scott Company of a series of very carefully shielded receivers that had extremely low levels of local oscillator radiation. The German Navy apparently developed multi-stage tuned radio frequency receivers to avoid the possibility of local oscillator radiation. Even more amazingly, in his book Spycatcher, the ex-British intelligence services Peter Wright claimed to have invented a technique for determining the frequencies to which radio receivers in foreign embassies were tuned by picking up the radiation from their local oscillators. Once the local oscillator frequencies were known, incoming transmissions could be monitored. In some older radios, including military radios from World War II, the signal from the local oscillator leaked RF on its way to the first mixer. Although ships in a convoy were careful about maintaining radio silence, they would maintain a watch for mayday calls on 500 kHz, and this meant that the receiver was still transmitting. German submarines knew about this RF leak and would be able to pinpoint the location of ships even when they were not transmitting, and many Allied ships were apparently sunk this way. Detection of unlicensed TV sets, however, was achieved differently. To get adequate reception in the UK, at least in the 1950s and 1960s, an outside antenna was usually necessary, and the presence of one of these devices on a rooftop could hardly be missed. Electronic detection was based on picking up a harmonic from the sawtooth waveform used to build up the picture. In post-World War II UK, it was about 10 kHz. Since these sawtooth waveforms are very rich in harmonics, the detector vans used a directional loop antenna and a single receiver tuned to one of the higher harmonics of the line time-based frequency to pick up the stray magnetic field emitted. 
In some European countries, there was no need to use a detector van as all buyers of TV or radio sets had to supply their names and addresses to the dealer, who then passed these on to the department in charge of issuing radio and TV licences. More modern military gear came into play and more sophisticated consumer radios went on to be built with several restrictive filters to isolate the local oscillator so that the local oscillator and the first mixer were separated by at least 80 dB. Obviously today things are much different. TVs and radios are completely different, the way we receive most of our viewing has changed massively and there are no detector vans anymore. So I hope you followed that.